Good morning, mabuhay, and blessed be God forever. I am Sir Ariel, and in this video lesson, we will be talking about data collection methods. Data collection is an important step in research because this will enable you to gather the data you need in order to answer your research questions. So without further ado, let's look at some of the most common data collection methods as well as some examples to help you better understand this lesson. Before discussing data collection methods, it is important to differentiate data collection from research instrument. Data collection and research instrument is often used interchangeably. Data collection is defined as the procedure of collecting, measuring, and analyzing accurate insights for research using standard validated techniques. Just like what I've said, data collection enables researchers to answer the stated research questions. Data collection as a step in research is common to all fields of studies, including science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, humanities and social sciences, as well as the realm of accountancy, business, and management. Although data collection can vary across fields, there is a common emphasis on ensuring quality, accurate, as well as honest collection of data. Research instrument refers to any tool that you may use to collect or obtain, measure, and analyze data that is relevant to the subject of your research. I would like to emphasize that only data relevant to your study should be included in your instrument. You cannot ask questions in your surveys or interviews just because you like them. Anyway, that's a discussion for another time, but don't forget to like the video and click the subscribe button. At this point, we will now be discussing the different data collection methods. Observation is a way of gathering data by watching behavior, events, or noting physical characteristics in their natural setting. You need to clearly state the categories or criteria that you will include in your observation. For example would be if you want to study about observance of health protocols against COVID-19. A checklist will greatly help you and will enable you to quickly identify the behaviors that you are trying to observe. What's good about observation as a data collection method is it's straightforward and efficient. It also allows you to directly see what people do rather than relying on what people say they did. Observation doesn't typically require extensive training from the data collector. And data collectors are not dependent on the availability of the participants. Although, observation tends to be superficial and lacks the context needed to provide a complete picture. Observation can be expensive and time-consuming as well, compared to other data collection methods. It is also susceptible to the Hawthorne effect. Hawthorne effect is a situation in which the respondents or the subjects of your study changes their behavior because they are aware that they are being observed. The next data collection method that we will discuss is survey. Surveys are often used when information is sought from a large number of people or on a wide range of topics where in-depth responses are not necessary. Surveys can be done through questionnaire and interview. Have you ever answered a customer satisfaction survey in Jollibee? Or are you already annoyed with the repeated pop-up on Messenger app after your call? Through the use of questionnaires, data collection becomes a process of collecting data through an instrument consisting of a series of questions and prompts to receive a response from individuals it is administered to. Unlike observation, surveys through questionnaires are cost-effective and can be administered in large numbers. Also, questionnaires are very easy to analyze and visualize. Unfortunately, questionnaires cannot produce qualitative data and answers may be dishonest or the respondents may lose interest midway. Next method is interview. An interview is a face-to-face -face conversation between two individuals with the sole purpose of collecting relevant information to satisfy a research purpose. Interviews can be structured, semi-structured, and unstructured. To put it simply, structured interview is a verbally administered questionnaire and thus, the questions are mostly closed-ended. 
in terms of depth, it is surface level, and is usually completed within a short period. For speed and efficiency, it is highly recommendable, but it lacks depth. For semi-structured interviews, there consists of several questions which cover the scope of the areas to be explored. It allows a little more leeway for the researcher to explore the subject matter. If I want to study what modality of learning students prefer, I'd have structured questions and choices, and I can also have open-ended questions like asking them why they like modular, online, or blended learning. Unstructured interviews allow researchers to collect a wide range of information with a purpose. Unstructured interviews, for example, are used for counseling. The counselor does not typically know the problem initially, and discussions can shift from a wide range of topics about the one being counseled. An advantage of this method is the freedom it gives a researcher to combine structure with flexibility, even though it is more time-consuming. Interviews provide opportunities for researchers to ask follow-up questions as well as clarifications for vague responses. In general, interviews provide in-depth information, freedom of flexibility, and accuracy of data. Some of you may hesitate using interviews as a data collection method because it is time-consuming and expensive to collect. Data collection is not just limited in observations, surveys, or interviews. There are also other data collection methods which you can use for your study. While restrictions and lockdowns require us to send and receive information through the internet, it is also a good source of data. Media contents can include social media posts, speeches, and news articles, which can be basis for your arguments and conclusions of your study. Data can also be obtained through the use of different technologies and scientific measurements. As an example, recently, there was a company willing to pay thousands of pesos for people to watch horror movies. Their study is centered around determining the correlation of movie budget and the degree of movies being scary. Would you be willing to participate in that? I'm sure I would. The company will be sending a Fitbit monitor to measure heart rate in watching horror movies. Some other common data obtained through these instruments are weight, height, sugar level, and etc. Examinations, tests, and other assessments are also rich sources of valid and reliable data. Examples of this are IQ tests, national achievement tests, and even National College Assessment Examination or NCAE. All of these measure your knowledge and skills based on the standards. If you want to determine whether online class is better than modular, you can assess the understanding of learners belonging to both categories about the same topic. Remember that you can use one or more data collection methods in your study. However, you might be thinking that it's difficult for you to gather data in a conventional manner due to the limitations of COVID-19. Because of this, data collection can be very challenging. Thus, it is important for us to look at other possibilities. Data can be categorized into two, primary and secondary data. Primary data refers to the first-hand data gathered by the researcher himself. Secondary data refers to data collected by someone else earlier. Examples of secondary data are statistical reports, government publications, books, journals, and newspapers. Secondary data are known to be readily available compared to that of primary data. It requires very little research and needs for manpower to use these sources. Using secondary data allows you to gather more information and data that you can gather yourself. However, you have to make sure that this is the ones that you need to answer your research questions or objectives. Those are the different data collection methods. Remember that your choice of method should lean on accurately gathering the data you need for your study. If you are still unsure with your choice, it is best to read related literatures of your study and see what data collection methods they use. Also, your advisor can give you great insight on what data collection method is appropriate for your study. That will be all for this video. I hope you learned a lot. And again, I am Sir Ariel Balleta. Keep safe and God bless.